Okay, so it's recording. Oh. All right. Welcome to Queer Conversations, uh, week two. This week we're covering LGBTQ plus terms. Uh, I'm Matt, the club president. I'm Hannah. I'm the PR manager. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And we'll hopefully be having other members of the club drop in while we're doing this. So be ready for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, we got this list of terms from it's pronounced metrosexual.com, but we will also be um, adding in our own. Uh, our own terms. And yeah, yeah, our own terms and our own um, research in addition to the definitions that this website has provided because there's there's a couple definitions that i personally need to expand on or completely redo so so our first one is uh a gender i'll stop sharing the screen so that it's a little more interesting i guess so we have agender, which means a person with no or very little connection to the traditional system of gender, no personal alignment with the concepts of either man or woman, and or someone who sees themselves as existing without gender, sometimes called gender neutral, uh, gender neutral or genderless. So um, I'd say that's pretty accurate. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. So next up is ally. So it's typically straight and or cisgender uh, person who supports and respects members of the LGBTQ community. We consider people to be active allies who take action on in support and respect. Did it just so, so people who are allies basically um, are very actively uh, they're active in the community and they are very respectful mm -hmm. of our community they're not just um, they're not just there to take part in it yeah and I would say definitely like I wouldn't consider the people that just go to pride to hang out because they think it's a fun party that's not really ally behavior the whole right. I support you, but I still think what you're doing is wrong, but I'm still an ally. You're not. Mm -mm. That's not ally behavior. That's still telling us that we're wrong and incorrect in something that we don't choose. This is just kind of how it is. So, yeah. All right. So next we have androsexual or androphilic. Uh, and it's being primarily sexually, romantically, and or emotionally attracted to men, males, or masculinity. And I'm personally not super familiar with this term because that doesn't apply to me, so. Yeah, that one, <laughs> uh, and the gynosexual, I, I don't see those ones used very often. They can mm -hmm. be used to, like, for people to more specifically, like, I, I could assume that, like, somebody who is bisexual or pansexual also using those words being like i am attracted to multiple genders but i am more attracted to um like men or women because i don't think the androsexual or the gynosexual are exclusive attraction to men or women so i think that's where that would be used for the most part but mm -hmm. terms that aren't frequently and for context, the other one is gynosexual or uh, gynophilic, and that is the uh, uh, attraction to women, uh, females, or femininity. Cool. And um, yeah, so that's later on the list, but we can skip that now. So aromantic, this is one I do know more about. Uh, experiencing little or no romantic attraction to others and or has a lack of interest in romantic relationships or behavior. Aromanticism exists on a continuum from people who experience no romantic attraction or have any de desire for romantic activities 
to those who experience low levels or romantic attraction only under specific conditions. Many of these people on the continuum have their own identity labels, uh, see demiromantic, sometimes abbreviated to arrow. Um, so aromantic is a little bit of an umbrella term. Um, it's in short, it is the lack of romantic attraction to anybody. And then um, demiromantic is when um, you start off without that romantic attraction. And then as you become very, very close with this person, you start to feel more romantic attraction. And then um, there's also gray aromantic, which um, means you only you only experience romantic attraction under very specific circumstances. Yeah. Cool. Next is asexual, and that is essential. That is very similar. They're often um, connected. So asexual is experience little or no sexual attraction to others, and or a lack of interest in sexual relationships or behavior. Um, sometimes abbreviated to ace, and basically that one is another umbrella term. Um, like aromantic, it's, um, it, it is not having no sexual attraction to other people. And then there's demiromantic, which, um, demisexual. What, did I say demiromantic? Yeah, you did. <laughs> ah, okay. okay. Yeah. Uh, so yes, demisexual, um, is when you eventually, are, you eventually develop the interest in sex once you have become very, very close with this person and are in a very close relationship with them. Um, and there's also gray asexual, which means you only experience sexual attraction in very, very specific conditions. And then also you can be aromantic without being asexual, or you can be asexual without being aromantic, mm -hmm. or you can be both. Um, can I say something real quick about figuring out if you do identify with these identities? Yes. So something that I have seen before with people trying to figure out if they are ace or aro is kind of assuming that people who do feel romantic attraction or sexual attraction feel it all the time. So I've seen a lot of people who say that they identify as like demisexual or something because they're just like, well, I don't look at people and be like, oh, I want to have sex with them. I have to get to know them. And I'm like, well, that's kind of disrespectful to a lot of other people who do feel sexual attraction because you're kind of calling them kind of whores. And people who do experience, um, yeah, like sex addicts and stuff, like people who do experience attraction don't experience it 100% all the time towards anybody they might possibly be attracted to. So just keep that in mind if you figure out whether you are or not, because they're awesome. They're awesome labels and also awesome, awesome identities, but make sure that you know what you're really feeling before throwing that out there. Mm -hmm. I've, I've seen that a lot. And also um, that can be referred to as hypersexuality, where yeah. you're attracted to pretty much everything. And that's very really so different. Hi, honey. Uh, honey has joined the call. She is, uh, they are also part of the Pride Club. Hello. All right. Next up on this list is uh, a term I kind of, I personally am not super, like, I'm not really a fan of this term. It's bicurious. Uh, I don't really like that one either. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, the definition is a curiosity towards experience attraction of people of the same gender similar to questioning just use questioning he's questioning by curious really you seem like the sorority girl who sometimes wants to kiss another girl while they're drunk it the gay until graduation girls yeah it just it kind of is disrespectful to both like bisexual people and questioning people mm -hmm. it's it's not a good term and i don't recommend ever using it yeah use questioning it's mm -hmm. better. I have a question. Yes. Have recovered lipstick lesbian or not lipstick? No, not yet. Gold star lesbian. I can. Yeah, we can both do that. We're like, we're going alphabetically, so we're on the B section right now. Ooh, fun. Yeah. So up next is bi gender, 
which I'm not familiar with, and the only person I know who is by gender is not a great person, but I don't hold that against the, um, the term itself. Mm -hmm. um, so it means a person who fluctuates between traditionally woman and man gender-based behavior and identities, identifying with two genders or sometimes identifying with either man or woman, as well as a third different gender. So it basically means you identify as more than one gender at the same time. Mm -hmm. cool. And it's not the same as gender fluid, which we will cover oh. later. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Um, binder or binding? I know a lot about this one. I am binding right now. <laughs> so it is, it is, they're describing it as an undergarment used to alter or reduce the, the appearance of one's breasts. Ah, I hate that word. <laughs> worn similarly to how one wears a sports bra. Um, or, and then binding is the sometimes daily, should not be daily, you need to take breaks if you're binding, process of wearing a binder. Binding is often used to change the way others read or perceive one's anatomical sex characteristics and or as a form of gender expression. So I use binding because I have gender dysphoria. So I use it to flatten my chest, and that's what a lot of people do. But it's not exclusive to um, trans men. Mm -mm. It's tra anybody who's trans masculine or non-binary, basic assigned female at birth, mm -hmm. or, yeah. or even assigned intersex. It's even um, used a lot of times for people who may not identify as as a man or even fully as trans masculine but um still don't feel comfortable like i've known especially like in the lesbian community a lot of i hesitate saying cis woman because gender is really difficult when you're lesbian i'll cover that later um but from especially a lot of butch lesbians will um bind or even get um top surgery and such that doesn't mean they identify as a man so binding is used by a wide array of people in the community who want to alter their um, gender expression or their appearance. Mm -hmm. And it's not, it's even not exclusive to um, trans people assigned mm -hmm. female at birth. It also applies to cis men who have gynecomastia, meaning mm -hmm. they have extra growth in their chest. And that is actually what the original binder was designed for. Oh, interesting. And that's um, the company, that's what the company Underworks is used for. So if you are a trans masculine person, you should be using GC2B, which is oh, a company yeah. designed by a trans male for trans people. Awesome. Um, something that I've seen recently, if you don't need to bind or you're not trans, but you just like the aesthetic of binding, don't do that. It's really not good for you. It's, it's not good for you. It's really hurtful for people who do need to bind. It was like we were at um, a drag show a while ago and there was the, it was a King's show. So it was a lot of, um, it was mostly a fab performers, not all women performers. Um, but there was a cis man performing as a King who had a perfectly flat chest and put tape on his chest because he wanted the appearance of being trans. That's not okay. So just, that's just something that I've seen recently. Don't do that either. Yeah. Yep. Okay, so next term is biological sex. A medical term used to refer to the chromosomal, hormonal, and anatomical characteristics that are used to classify an individual as female or male or intersex, often referred to simply as sex. Physical sex, anatomical sex, or specifically as sex assigned at birth. So I know a lot about biology. And so chromosomal bio, so chromosomes are not always what you think they are. Uh, there are tons of people who have, uh, there are, the, in high school, a lot of times they won't do labs with, uh, finding out what your chromosomes are because they don't have the time to deal with um, a female student finding out they have XY chromosomes 
or a male student finding out they have XX chromosomes and then and they just um, have they've just developed as the gender that their chromosomes did not reflect and so it's it's really complex and the fact that anybody thinks trans people can't exist is honestly really wild to me science has been literally proving that trans people non-binary people intersex people gender people for for like decades they've always been over here everybody who's like science is on our side science is too biological sex it's like maybe you should read some better science because biology is not white and black it's 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 not the other biology. There's so many terms. There are. Mm -hmm. And also, um, it's, not, it's not a new thing. If you saw our last video, you would know that it dates back to, to long before the 1400s. I think the mm -hmm. earliest person we covered was the 1400s. And that doesn't mean there weren't people before the 1400s. Right. It was recorded or it was recorded and destroyed because that happened a lot. Mm hmm yeah, there were there were people thousands of years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Next term is biphobia. We should probably cover bisexual first. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're also going to cover the difference between bisexual and pansexual. Ooh. Okay. So the term list as listed by this website is a person who experiences attraction to some men and women, a person who experiences attraction to some people of their gender and another gender. Uh, bisexual attraction does not have to be equally split or indicate a level of interest with that is the same across the genders an individual may be attracted to. And then this website says, often used interchangeably with pansexual, and that is not true. And neither is the only being attracted to one gender and another gender Bi or bisexual it does not mean only two and mm -hmm. people have been saying that for years when i remember kind of when pansexual was kind of coming out and there was so much biphobia and bi people are over here being like that's not what it is read our manifesto that was made decades ago please please read this. <laughs> another thing i find common is people who think a bisexual they only think cis men and cis women and that's definitely not true mm -hmm. even yeah. if you are attracted to men and women that includes the trans community because they're men and women they're just they yeah just and everyone me. automatically thinks oh cis people it's like no that assumption in itself is transphobic when people say exactly people are transphobic because they only date cis men and cis women it's like well yeah. you're being transphobic by assuming that when they say i'm attracted to men and women i don't mean trans people that's that's your fault yeah that's like another thing that i kind of saw that yeah, i did I've seen that like. a lot. so so to be very quick with this distinction is bisexual <laughs> is the attraction to two or more genders and you can and it often has a preference for one or for uh, a certain gender and that can include trans people non-binary people etc and then pansexual is attraction regardless of gender so gender is not a factor that plays mm -hmm. into the attraction and that also does not mean that sexual people are hyper focused on people's genitalia because i've also right. seen that so they, you can have that distinction without saying that bi people are so focused on people's bodies that they don't care about what's in their minds. That's very not true. Mm -hmm. So now um, it's pretty clear what biphobia is. It is the uh, fear, anger, intolerance, invisibility, resentment, erasure, or discomfort with biphobia. I disagree with the discomfort part. You're just, you're just hateful. Yeah. You're just, yeah. Yeah. You're just an ass. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And biphobia comes within the, from within the community too, and yeah. that's that's one of the worst parts about it. Yeah. It's the same with lesbophobia is that there's also like there's a lot of in community lesbophobia as well. Mm -hmm. 
Great. So the next term is butch. Do you want me to tell you the definition given by this website first? Yeah, read me the definition. Okay, it says, a person who identifies themselves as masculine, whether it be physically, mentally, or emotionally, which is sometimes used as a derogatory term for lesbians, but it is also claimed as an affirmative identity label. That's, that's iffy. Okay, butch is a lesbian-specific term um, made by lesbians for lesbians decades ago. It's almost, it's almost been a century that um, butch and femme have been around. And it originated in working class bar culture. Um, and it's for, it's not an aesthetic. I have been seeing so many people throw around butch recently, like on TikTok and stuff. It's not just if you're a little masculine, it's a way of life, it's a way of your relationships. It's about being, it's really hard to define because it is about being masculine. Like you can't be feminine and call yourself butch, but it's not about the aesthetic because, um, yeah, so it's, it's, um, yeah, it's subverting masculinity for the attraction of women. And it is, um, yeah, it's, it's, it is about masculinity, but it's not just about masculinity. It's about your relationships specifically with other women. Um, and it's about how you like perceive the world. And a lot of butch lesbians are actually like non-binary because a lot of the times their main connection with womanhood is their loving of other women. It's really hard to be like, I'm a woman because you see all of these things everywhere telling you what a woman should be and you're not that. And so you can't be a butch lesbian and not, and like identify as being male aligned because then you're not a lesbian and you can't be butch. And that's something I can cover either now or later, depending on what Matt wants to do, is why butch with them are lesbian specific terms and why that's not hateful or exclusionary. Let's so. wait for when we get to femme. Cool. All right. Next term is cisgender, a gender description for when someone's sex assigned at birth and gender, gender identity correspond in the expected way. I don't like how they phrased that. Yeah. Um, and then a simple way to think about it is if the person is not transgender, they are cisgender. And it can also be shortened to cis. So basically, if you are raised female and you still identify as female, you are cisgender. If you are raised male and still identify as male, you are cisgender. If you are non-binary, you're trans. <laughs> yeah. And, and um, trans is an umbrella term, and we'll get to that later. And cis is not a derogatory term. It's not. I don't People are like, don't call me cis. It's like, it's... It's not a slur. It's not. It's also, it doesn't stand for anything. I've also had a lot of people, or like I've read about a lot of people being like, this stands for this. It's like, no, it's just the opposite of trans. That's all it is. It's, yeah, and it, okay. it's just, it just refers to most people. Yeah, it's just, it's not derogatory, and it's not a slur. You're fine. Yeah. Ooh, cisnormativity. Mm. The assumption in individuals and in institutions that everyone is cisgender and that cisgender identities are superior to trans identities and people. And then that often leads to invisibility of non cisgender identities. I agree with this. Mm -hmm. Yep. You ever seen a movie with a trans person in it? <laughs> Not really. And that sucks. And that's cisnormativity. Mm -hmm. And even the um, movies and stuff, I've seen so many movies that I later regret that I supported um, because they have trans people played by cis people. And oh, no. that's, that's erasure. There's, guess what? There's trans actors out there. They exist. And yeah, especially there was, uh, there. oh, there's one on Netflix, or I don't remember if it still is, called Three Generations. And I think it's about a trans guy and it's played by a cis girl. And I watched that like seven years ago and I'm like, wow, this is a great movie. And then I read about it a little while ago. I'm like, I can't believe I watched that. Oh, that's not okay. So mm -hmm. that's, I think that just really plays into is that we even have 
we, we don't even represent our trans representation correctly. And I've seen one movie with um, trans characters. They weren't, they weren't even portrayed in the movie as trans. They were referred to as drag queens who are, but they're just in drag all the time. And <laughs> the way they described their existence, they were describing being trans women. And all three of them were played by cisgender men. I hate that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm cis. I'm drag all the time. <laughs> okay. Next term is six, cis sexism. Behavior that grants preferential treatment to cisgender people reinforces the idea that being cisgender is somehow better or more right than being transgender and or makes other genders invisible. I also agree with that. Mm -hmm. And that shows itself in forms of, like, you know, TERFs and being like, hey, I'm exclusively attracted to men or women, meaning I'm exclusively attracted to penis or vagina. And the, you can also see that on like, TV in the form of jokes about, oh, I went out with this girl the other day and then we went to bed and, oh, she was a man. Like, that's cis sexism. That's. And it's not okay. Yeah, it's not okay. It's disregarding people's gender. It's, yeah, it's gross. Don't do it. Our next term is closeted. It's one that probably all three of us are very familiar with. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and it, uh, it's an individual who is not open to themselves or others about their uh, LGBTQ sexuality. The website says queer, but it's not always that case. Uh, or gender identity. This may be by choice or for other reasons, such as fear for one's safety, peer or family rejection or disapproval and or loss of housing, job, etc. Yeah, also being, known as being in the closet, and when someone chooses to break the silence, they come out of the closet. And being in the closet is not an inherently bad thing. I know that we have, like, National Coming Out Day, which is really cool, but never force somebody out of the closet. Never out somebody unless you okay it with them. And also, don't use the term coming out of the closet or being in the closet if you're not LGBTQ. I've seen like, oh, I'm an in the closet vegan. It's like, oh, that's really disrespectful. Your choices and how you eat food are not the same as our community being persecuted around the world and murdered for who we are. So don't use it if you're not LGBT. Don't, don't force people to come out and just be respectful. Mm -hmm. I've heard it uh, used for, uh, so my mom used it to refer to as coming out as atheist to her family because we are, her family is um, a little more Christian and it's, they, they don't, they don't care. You don't need to use the word coming out. Coming out doesn't refer to coming out as something with some stigma. It's specifically for LGBT things like. Right. Oh, it has stigma. Oh boy, you're not getting killed. You don't have laws against you. You're okay. <laughs> well, that brings us to our next term, which is coming out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the process by which one accepts and or comes to identify one's own sexuality or gender identity. Um, I disagree with that because you can do that without coming out. Mm -hmm. You can accept yourself without being public about it coming yeah. out is about being public about it yeah or at least coming out to a specific person and telling this one or more people that you are this identity because so you don't have to be fully public you can come out to a small group of like three people and um coming out isn't a one-time thing so mm -hmm. People will come out for the majority of the time, but you're always coming out. Like, every single day, if you're talking to new people, like, at my work, um, I come out to, like, all of the customers who I just send my girlfriend to, I come out to. And also, don't be afraid of coming out more than once, 
because sometimes you discover more about yourself. Like there's tons of people who originally like I will identify as bisexual or pansexual and then come out as a lesbian or gay or vice versa. That's okay. You're figuring yourself out as long as you don't keep like as long as you don't disrespect those terms and like completely flip flop all the time or identify like identify as a bisexual lesbian. That's not okay. But um, you can come out more than once. Like, if, and if people judge you for that, that's their problem because you're figuring yourself out and that's really cool. Yeah, and um, a lot of that is from cis normativity and heteronormativity because everybody assumes that you're not going to be in the LGBTQ community. Yeah. But also, um, there is a difference in how often you have to come out uh, if you're... Um, if you're not heterosexual or if you're not cisgender. Mm -hmm. So like for, um, for non-heterosexual people, they're coming out all the time because anytime they introduce their partner, they're coming out. Mm -hmm. And then trans people don't necessarily have to come out after they've fully transitioned. Yeah. And because um, we're gonna get to the term stealth later, but um, if a trans person is going stealth, um, they don't have to come out anymore. Yeah. Yeah. Don't force people to come out just because you know somebody's trans and then you get all salty that you know that they're trans, but other people don't. Too bad. Figure that mm -hmm. for yourself. People don't have to come out. If I don't want to tell somebody I'm a lesbian, I don't have to. That's my choice. That's my safety. That's if somebody wants to, like, even with, uh, like, I know there's, I don't think we talked about it because it's not a widely used term anymore, but having a beard. So it's normally like a gay man dating a gay woman, just kind of like covering each other. They're being safe. You can't blame mm -hmm. somebody for trying to stay safe. It's not your choice whether somebody comes out or not. Mm -hmm. And that, that also, um, that kind of, that kind of uh, connects to um, when you're referring to your friend who is in the community, don't out them by saying, oh, my lesbian friend Hannah, or oh, my trans friend Matt. Just say your friend Hannah. Yeah. You don't have to add the label. Unless you have explicit permission. Like, yeah. It, it depends on who you're talking to. Because, like, if I'm talking, or, if, like, if Matt's talking to somebody else in the community, and you're like, oh, I have a friend who's a lesbian. I don't mind. But some people do mind. Mm -hmm. Even other people in the community. So, just get permission. It's not that hard. Just message them. Be like, hey, can I tell X, Y, or Z that you're this? And if they say no, don't push it. Yeah. Okay. Here's one that I wish Ren was here for because they know a lot more about this. Mm -hmm. um, this is the word constellation, and it is a way to describe the arrangement or structure of a polyamorous relationship. Oh, I don't even know that one. Right? Yeah, I, I learned this one, and I, so I don't know how accurate it is. So I wish Ren was here to discuss it. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but that, that's what how this website describes it. Okay. Mm -hmm. that's, really, that's really cute. I like that. Right? Yeah. Doors. <sighs> Here's a term that I really don't like, and it's the term cross-dresser. It is very outdated it's offensive to most people yeah. um and it's uh it's they describe it as someone who wears the clothes of another another gender or sex J just say gender non-conforming yeah or, or, it's it's a lot nicer it's cross-dresser is an old term it's offensive it was often used as a derogatory term or a slur uh not a slur but like yeah it, it was it was used to make people feel bad about yeah. how they identified and it's and most often used to refer to trans women and it's yeah. not a, similarly to the word shemale which i also oh, really oh, hate oh, i remember everybody using that in elementary school Ugh. my grandpa has used that mm -hmm. and <laughs> bad don't don't use those terms yeah mm -hmm. and Oh, yeah. Um, and if I'm looking over here, if my girlfriend's sitting on the couch giving me little bits of information, she knows things. Um, but 
also like like Matt said, just say gender nonconforming or if they're cross dressing sometimes for like cosplay, just say they're cosplaying or just say that they're dressing like this for the day or don't say anything. <laughs> they're just dressed. Yeah. Who cares? Well, and for cosplay, it's often referred to as gender bending. And yeah. that, that's, it, sometimes that's not okay, but for cosplay, yeah. it's okay. Well, yeah, there, there are times that it's not okay, but in the context, yeah, in the context mm -hmm. of cosplay, I've never really seen it. Being if you're referring to somebody's existence, it's not okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is a term oh. that I wasn't, uh, wasn't familiar with. But it's down low, typically referring to men who identify as straight but secretly have sex with men. Oh. Down low originated in and is most commonly used by communities of color. Sorry, I wasn't I wasn't prepared for the second half of the definition. <laughs> I, I hate it. That's interesting. Yeah, it's it's not one that I've heard before, but I can understand it, it's yeah, yeah. Especially it's, it's like, a safety I, thing. Yeah, exactly. Like so I, I'm assuming that kind of tends to refer to bisexual men who don't want to be mm -hmm. known as bisexual. That's kind of what I got from it. And I can understand that because um, from what I've read, obviously, I am not a person of color. I am just speaking from what I have read. Um, there is sometimes a little bit of heightened um, homophobia or biphobia within communities just because um, some minority communities have been beaten down so much that they're trying to preserve their masculinity and stuff so then they end up unfortunately like going the other way obviously not all the time not in every community not that much i i just read that that can happen since you said that that has to be a, a more a minority term a racial minority term if mm -hmm. that i can't see the definition but yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so sense. The next also, two terms. Also, I'm here. My dog is. I'm taking my dog for a walk, so you will hear crying in the background. You, but can, I, you can also mute yourself if you want. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, so I the next two terms uh, Joy might want to talk about because they are drag king and drag queen. You want to come talk, Joy? Okay, I have to get the cat off my lap again. She has the cat on her lap, so she'll come in a second. Okay. This website describes them as someone who performs hyper-masculinity or femininity theatrically. Yeah, that's mostly true. I think so. Come on, Joy! It's okay, so am I. Hello. All right, so drag is a very, uh, it's a very old kind of um, it's a very old practice and actually can go back uh, technically a long time to like Greek times when they would have plays and they oh, would yeah. have men play all of the roles. That was partially because they wouldn't allow that women. That was partially because they wouldn't allow women, but there, a lot of like inspiration comes from that and sometimes. But it's also very much a bar culture thing where there will be gay bars and uh, some of them that were undercover would have drag queens and drag kings come and perform, but they would actually be dressing as the other gender, and drag queens are gay men, uh, typically are gay men that are dressing in a hyper-feminine form um, and to just lip-sync and perform the songs, and drag kings are typically females um, who dress in a hyper-masculine way. Uh, usually like, lesbians. Usually lesbians, and you, yeah, usually lesbians, uh, and they perform, uh, obviously they do the same thing and lip-sync and perform. Yeah. But it's definitely a way of expressing, uh, like, it's pretty much just messing up gender. Mm -hmm. in, it's, it's pretty much to smash all of the stereotypical roles about gender because uh, you see a woman on stage with a fake beard and having their, like, chest taped back and, like, sometimes having a burrito shoved in their pants. <laughs> Thank you, Land Insider. <laughs> There, yeah, there's lots of resources and stuff. Uh, RuPaul's Drag Race is not one of the best. It is not the best thing to learn about drag queens or the drag community at all because the people who run it are very um, are very transphobic and they do not. Uh, they more use it as a way to create drama and portray drama within the community instead of acceptance. 
Uh, Dragula is a pretty good one to watch, and I know that there are um, some online shows that I can't really remember the names of right now. If you go on Instagram, you will but, find them right now. Yeah, They're if everywhere. You, if you go on Instagram, you can find drag kings, you can find drag queens. Always support your lo local drag artists, because most of the time, me, most of the time, they are just uh, LGBT people who are looking to have fun and do what they love and get some extra money on the side to support themselves and the people that they love. Yeah, and a lot of kings and queens are um, trans, mm -hmm. and they do it to, like, reaffirm gender, they, yes. their gender. Yes. Um, I would say, um, if you're cis, like, it, me as a, uh, I'm just gonna say I'm cis, me as a cis woman performing as a drag queen, be careful with that, because yeah. drag is supposed to, like, mess with gender, and I would is, just be reaffirming gender stereotypes. Yes. So it is more. It's for trans people. It's a gender affirming thing. Yeah, so trans awesome. women do it. Being drag queens is that's good, so cool. And trans men doing drag king stuff is also very good. And I love them. And I support all of my trans men drag kings. Um, and same with the trans women drag queens, of course. Mm -hmm. But yeah, uh, just cisgender people, especially cisgendered straight people, doing drag in their same gender. Be careful. Don't. Pr probably don't just yeah. respect people and respect the art and, and uh, let, support local drag and, people instead yeah. of trying to do it yourself let lgbt people have their spaces yes. please mm -hmm. so. if, if you're cishet and you're doing drag in your own no. gender it's not drag it's really it's it's just it, go, it's go to your cool. local theater club yeah it's performing mm -hmm. that's great i'm you're awesome you're doing mm -hmm. at that point it's just performing yeah yeah uh, yeah yeah, even for the most part, if you're cishet, don't do drag. That's it's, just go, it's, go join the theater. It's yeah, a, join join your local drama club. Yeah, join your local. Drama. Yeah, go act, perform, be awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you just don't take our spaces. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yes. All right. I'm gonna go put more animal crossing. Have fun. I don't like this term. Oh boy. Um, I wish Aislinn was here. Could she could talk about it? Because okay. it's one that she's okay with. It's the term dyke. Oh, I can talk about it. Okay, well, it's referring to a masculine presenting lesbian, while often used derogatorily, it is also reclaimed affirmatively by some lesbians and gay women as a positive self-identity term. So dyke, yeah. If you're not a lesbian, please don't use dyke. I, I know that it's been used on by women, especially like masculine presenting by a woman, but the people using those slurs assume you're a lesbian. So there's still like the, the guy yelling dyke at you on the street is assuming that you're a lesbian. It is a lesbian specific slur. Don't reclaim it if you're not a lesbian. There, yeah, I'll, I'll talk more about that in the article. There's, there's just like the three words we ask you to not use, but um, a lot of people do reclaim dyke, um, and that's awesome. Don't call somebody a dyke if they don't want you to. Um, a lot of lesbians also don't want you calling them dyke unless you're another lesbian. Like, if Joy called me a dyke, awesome. Matt, if you called me a dyke, I don't, I don't think I would like that. I also wouldn't do that. Because I know you wouldn't. I'm just, the term yeah. makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> and it, it's also one of those terms that make me extremely uncomfortable. And I don't feel like I'd be uncomfortable using it, mm -hmm. uncomfortable being called it, just uncomfy. Yeah. And so, like, it, like it's still a slur. Like, yes, it's been reclaimed yeah. by some of the community, but for the most part, it's still a slur. Yeah. So if you reclaim dyke, awesome. Just before you use it in other communities, make sure that everybody, like everybody in the room is okay with you using it. Because I think lesbians reclaiming dyke is awesome because lesbian a lot of the time has just been made into this performative straight thing. And so calling it like I know for a lot of lesbians calling yourself a dyke is being like I'm going against the norm. I am not a porn lesbian. I am this and I'm out and I'm proud. But just like just make sure everybody else is okay with it. And if you're not a lesbian, please don't use it. So while we're on the term of slur or while we're on the uh slurs, 
Mm -hmm. Next one is fag or faggot. Ooh. I also really don't like this one. Um, I know that a lot of people use it for themselves, though. It is, as this website describes, derogatory term referring to a gay person or someone perceived as queer. While often used derogatorily, it is also used, uh, reclaimed by some gay people, often gay men, mm -hmm. as a positive in-group term. Um, yeah. Like we said before, if don't call other people this. People can call themselves it. I personally don't even like to say it. Neither do I. And yeah, I would also say, especially if you're not a gay man, be really careful. Really think if you want to reclaim it. Kind of like dyke. They kind of are the two opposites. I know that word is used for more, like, dyke is pretty much only used for lesbians and people you assume are lesbians. I know faggot is used for, it is more commonly used for other people, but still, it is mostly used against gay men. So, do some research, do some thinking. Yeah, it's, it's primarily against gay men, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and just... I can, I can give a little bit of history about why this term is used against gay men. I think I know what you're talking about. And yeah, it's because uh, cigarettes used to be called faggots, and... Um, gay people would be rounded up, rolled up in carpets, and lit on fire like a cigarette. So that's that's why it's called that. Um, and also don't freak out if somebody in like Britain calls their cigarette a fag because they still are called that. And it's it is it's not a derogatory term at that point. It's just a difference in language. If they mm -hmm. call the person that that's not okay but if they call their cigarettes that that's just a difference in terms so don't get mad at british people for using their vocabulary unless they're calling somebody that because that's still not okay mm -hmm. all right uh we're going back to hannah with the term femme Yay! Uh, so this website describes it as someone who identifies themselves as feminine whether it be physically mentally or emotionally often used to refer to a feminine presenting queer woman or people. That's what this so, says. Yep. I did some more research this morning just to kind of look through some things. I have had this opinion for a very long time. Butch and femme are lesbian exclusive. And I know that's going to piss a lot of people off I because I know the term queer femme is thrown around all the time. But um, it's it was made by lesbians for lesbians and also femme does not mean super feminine. It's about subverting femininity, choosing the parts that you want and performing them only for women. So I'm femme. I don't wear makeup every day because that's damaging. I don't shave because I don't want to. I don't really wear dresses because they make me uncomfortable. I'm femme. Femme is not about wearing five inch heels, 10 pounds of makeup, flower crowns and dresses. And that's what I see all the time. And that's definitely what it means. Like, I was reading some articles this morning about people who were just like, wow, lesbians trying to tell me how I identify. If I want to wear my makeup every day and wear my heels and wear my dresses and call myself femme, I can. It's like, well, I'm proud of you for being feminine, but it's, it's our term. And um, I found an article that I really like that's talking about um, femme by for femme lesbians. And it's called um, On the Appropriation of Femme by Lesbians Over Everything. And um, it is, so like one of, what one of the people here is saying is, femme is a hard word to define, I think. We could just say a lesbian who performs femininity, but that doesn't get what it's really about. Because it's about subverting femininity. It's not about being traditionally feminine. And um, it's... I, I, when I was reading things this morning, I was almost in tears because there were so many people being like, why does it hurt you if somebody else uses femme? Because it's my identity, it's my way of life, it's my way of my relationship. It's not just a descriptor. And I know that a lot of people are out here saying lesbians are exclusive and selfish. We're literally asking you to not use three words. We have three words that we ask you to not use. That's butch, femme, and dyke. 
those are our words that we made with our culture. Like changing the meaning of words that are forced on us, like man or woman, mess with those terms, fuck them up. Sorry. <laughs> um, but like mess with those words. They were forced on us. Butch femme were made by us for us. There are words to define. There are words to use. There are words that we had crafted specifically for us and how we act. So I obviously can't control everybody who's out there defining themselves as femme, but just know that it hurts because it's my identity. It's not just, it's not just being feminine. It's like, cause I know that so many things it's like, oh, I'm a femme guy. It's like, you can just say you're a feminine guy without taking my identity and misappropriating it and using it for what it wasn't meant to be used. French for, for women, we're not speaking French now, are we? <laughs> we're not. And that's also why it really hurt a lot of butch femme lesbians to see the word butch. That's just mixing the two aesthetics. That's not okay. That's not an identity. Butch and femme are identities, not aesthetics. Somebody being like, sometimes I'm masculine, sometimes I'm feminine, therefore I'm butch. That's just misappropriating the words again. So I encourage some research. Um, understand that lesbians saying, please don't use our words, isn't saying, we hate you. We hate bi people. We hate trans people. It's not us saying that. It's us saying, we love you. We love our community. We love everybody. But please find your own words because we get as it is. I have seen so many people like, I was reading things. I was reading about a bunch of bisexual women hating lesbians because we're terrible and taking away from them when really it's been the opposite. So go look up the article that I mentioned, the, the appropriation of femme uh, by lesbians over everything. Do research, read about Leslie Feinberg and her, her butch identity and stop using our words. So that's that. That's my rant. Thank you. You're welcome. Annie, did you have something to say? All right, honey. Um, well, it's like I've done research, like I'm a Tumblr gay, and I've seen all of the like there are words for other communities. The bi community has their own equivalents of it. I'm pretty sure the gay community does. I think every like little community has their own versions of the word and that we shouldn't be using words from a community that don't doesn't belong to us yeah and that's that's the thing too it's like it's not us saying that we don't want you to identify or present how you want to we love that you're feminine or masculine we just it's everything. just it's our it's the words of us the lesbian community yeah, and I just, I feel like everybody's so comfortable taking our words and our definitions because I've also, something else I want to mention, um, bisexual lesbians, not a thing. Lesbian means attraction mm -hmm. to woman, and yes, that includes trans women, um, and yes, that includes non-binary lesbians because gender is hard when you're a lesbian and you completely take men out of the equation. Gender is difficult. Bisexual lesbians aren't a thing. You're just bisexual. You can be like, I guess you can be like bisexual, homo romantic. I guess I, yeah, I, cool, cool, whatever. You're not a lesbian. Stop. I feel. I feel like another thing, and this is this is a bit of a controversial opinion. Yeah. If you use them or butch and aren't in the lesbian community, it's like. How, it's like yeah it is cultural appropriation mm -hmm. but it's like kind of like using it as a sore word in my opinion yeah. and um something else yeah like I, I everybody today all the articles i was reading is like who cares what does it mean what does it matter it's like it matters to me it's my identity it's kind of like it the the most similar um example i can give to it, it i um was the example i talked about earlier of the cis guy saying, today I want to be trans and putting tape over. Oh. That's what it's similar to. And people don't want to recognize that that's what it's similar to because butch and femme are 
like for the most part they're they're basically genders they're basically lesbian genders that you're taking away from us it's it's using labels and genders and identities that aren't yours because you like the word that's not okay no it is not all right well on uh that kind of provides a little bit of a segue to the next term, which is FTM slash F2M or MTF slash M2F, which is um, FTM is female to male transgender and MTF is male to female transgender. Um, this, per this website also lists it as a transsexual person. Um, I will get to that later, but transsexual typically is a more outdated term or a more medical term. Yep. Um, Matt, what time are we at? Um, I think we've been on for almost an hour. Do we want to do a part two or do we want to just have a super long video? Let's just keep going. Cool. So, and we can even cut this too if we wanted to. We can cut it into yeah. videos if you can do that. Anyways. All right, the next term is gay. Um, I'm pretty sure most people already know what that is, but um, in case they don't, uh, it's experience attraction solely or primarily to some members of the same gender. Um, it can be used to refer to men who are attracted to other men and women who are attracted to other women. Um, it is also an umbrella term mm -hmm. used to refer to the community as a whole, but not as often it's typically lgbtq community yeah. uh, the next term is gender binary uh, the idea that there are only two genders and that every person is one of those two um, obviously that is not the case because um, there are tons of there are tons of, there are many other genders there are um, non-western cultures that recognize six genders and yeah, just like what I was saying, you know, there's there's identities within the community that kind of fall under things like butch and femme. They're, those are, gen they do kind of fall under woman because you kind of have to be a woman to be a lesbian, even if your main connection to womanhood is lesbianism. But there's two more that fall under the binary right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Um, next one is gender expression. I'm going to lump that in with uh, gender identity, so um, because a lot of people get these confused. So gender identity is the internal perception of one's gender and how they label themselves. I kind of disagree with that. Um, gender identity, like it, it is how you identify yourselves, but it's it's who you are. So if you're born female and you, um, but your brain tells you that you're actually male, mm -hmm. that it, your gender identity is that you are male. And gender expression can be presenting yourself masculinely, like I do, or you can present yourself more femininely, or you can present yourself androgynous. Expression does not equal identity and pres it's... And expression is also not the same as presentation. So something that um, happens with a lot of the trenders, which is also not really a thing, um, is that um, people will say that, oh, I'm a trans guy, and then they express themselves femininely. That's okay, but the gender presentation should be they are presenting themselves as male but are expressing themselves femininely. Yeah, that, like that's that's showing that you're trans. But if you are presenting yourself as female, but telling people that you're identifying as male, that's yeah. that's different. Yeah, that, like purposely getting breast augmentation and stuff. That, like that's if you mm -hmm. have to present female to be safe, that's different. Yes, After safety safety is different than just presenting yourself because you can yeah and so a lot of this goes into the whole trisha paytas thing she's not yes. trans she's not 
and it's it's not it's not even really an argument really it yeah 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 the only thing that i would say with like the gender expression can be different or like can be contrasting with your gender identity is that is different with butch and femme um if you're butch you if you don't present masculinely then you're not butch and same with femme and that doesn't mean you have to be hyper masculine and that doesn't mean you have to be hyper feminine i'm not hyper feminine a lot of people end up assuming I'm butch because I perform my own version of femininity. But that's just, yeah, that's just a addition. So I'm, I'm sharing this so that you guys can keep going while I grab a charger. Okay. So does that mean we're on gender normative, gender straight? Oh, okay. Um, someone whose gender presentation, whether by nature or by choice, aligns with society's gender-based expectations. I haven't really heard of at least the gender straight part of that. Um, I, I guess that can be kind of a thing. I'd, I'm not a super big fan of this because just because you align with society's gender-based expectations by, by nature, by choice, doesn't necessarily mean you're any less gay or trans or anything. And like, not that that's what it's saying, but I don't know. That's that's an interesting term that I, I don't see used very often. Um, yeah. And just like, for because, example, I don't look gay at all. Yeah. I mean, I look, I look, pretty, like, I look pretty gay. The straightest person I've met. I look like, I look very straight and I don't look like, I look like a stereotypical straight cis female. Mm-hmm. And that, I don't really enjoy that word. Yeah. And like, because, I, like, someone doesn't necessarily look like a sexuality. Yeah. And like, I, I love you, but I don't, I don't go, oh, you look like a lesbian. You look like Hannah. I do look like a lesbian. Um, just because I am a lesbian. It is a lesbian, lesbian looks like a lesbian. Um, yeah. And, well, yeah. But like you, you shouldn't like base someone's sexuality off how they visually look. Yeah, and I can. You see need a base. Mm -hmm. Um, I can see gender normative being used to like by people to be like, I'm gender normative. I can pass safely. But other than that, I don't know. I just don't think those. Are words that necessarily really need to be super used. I don't know. What do you think, Matt? Mm, and yeah. I agree. Yeah. 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 All right. The next term is gender fluid. Um, so this one, I'm going to just skip the def reading the definition um, because it's probably not quite right. Um, but basically, it's um, identifying as one gender and then identify so it's it's similar to by gender you identify as more than one gender but not at the same time so you can identify as say female one day and then male the next day mm -hmm. or it can take um, it can take hours it can be a difference so it can be a difference of hours days weeks even months or years and I've, I've seen this um, with multiple people is I have one friend who's who fluctuates between non-binary and um, female and it take and it fluctuates um, with days sometimes even hours and then another friend who fluctuates between male and female and it ta it's a difference of months or years yeah Mm -hmm. And something I've seen with um, gender fluid too, if um, you can be gender fluid like without going in between anywhere like male and female, but if you are gender fluid and you want to identify either as like strictly gay or like strictly lesbian, you can't go into another gender. Like, I, I just that like if you ever if you ever at all identify as male, you're not a lesbian. 
you can say that you're exclusively attracted to women, and I know there are other words for that. Um, I don't remember them off the top of my head. Like gynephilic or gynosexual. <laughs> I, yeah, I know I've seen other words. They might not be very widely used, but like same with if you're a gay man. If you're a gay man, but sometimes you identify, if you say that you're a gay man, but you sometimes identify as a woman, that doesn't quite work. Mm -hmm. So there's other words out there for you. Use them. Look them up. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And if you're non-binary, you can still use those terms. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, a lot of times um, the a lot of times gender fluid is between a non-binary identity mm -hmm. and one of the binary identities, yeah. but sometimes it's um, the binary identities. Yeah. Sometimes. It's less common, but it happens. Yeah. Both are cool. Just make sure you're using the appropriate terms and not disrespecting other terms. Mm -hmm. So our next term is gender queer. Um, uh, so this one... So this website describes it as a gender identity label often used by people who do not identify with the binary of man or woman, um, and it's an umbrella term for many gender non-conforming or non-binary identities. And I know that this is a very popular gender, but don't, like, don't use it for somebody if you don't know what their gender is. They need to identify it for themselves if you're yeah. going to use it for them. And I've, I've also seen gender queer used as a umbrella term for like all gender non-conforming people. Don't it really isn't. Transgender is the umbrella term. Yeah, it is. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like even with that, like. Or trans with the, with the uh, little star. Yeah. And like some gender non-conforming people do identify as trans and some don't. And that's kind of up to them. Like butch can be a trans identity, even if you are born a woman, live as a woman, go read Leslie Feinberg. She defines it very well um, as a trans butch lesbian who was also born a woman. So like, yeah, don't, don't use gender queer to like encompass everybody because it doesn't. Yeah. All right. Um, our next term. Ooh. This is one that is outdated. So the the term is hermaphrodite. Mm. It's an outdated medical term previously used to refer to somebody who was born with some combination of typically male and typically female sex characteristics. It's considered stigmatizing and inaccurate. That is, I agree with this. Um, it is outdated, and the correct term is intersex. And um, we we will get to this. We will get to that term a little bit later. But um, basically, intersex people are welcome within our community, but they often, uh, a lot of intersex people don't necessarily want to be recognized as LGBTQ. Yeah. But, um, they're welcome within the community if they decide that they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. So our next one is heteronormativity. It's much like cisnormativity. It's the assumption that um, in individuals and or in institutions that everyone is heterosexual and that heterosexuality is superior to all sexualities. It leads to invisibility and stigmatizing of other sexualities. Uh, when learning a woman is married, asking her what her husband's name is, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. It also leads yeah. us to assume that only masculine men and feminine women are straight. Yeah. Um, something else that I've seen recently that I think really falls into heteronormativity is there's a ton of people out here right now being like, there's gays everywhere, everything is gay now, all the characters are gay now, which is not true, show me the gay characters please, but I've seen in TV shows and stuff recently that are trying to be like shocking with, they're, they're being like, look, we have straight people, like I've seen um, like, somebody who's implied to be a lesbian, has, like, the short hair, has the flannels, and then, oh, there was a guy, mind-blowing, where we don't, not all our characters are gay, and then there's not another single, like, there's no other gay characters either, they're just like, see, not everybody's gay, and that's also, that's just, I, I've just seen that, and that's just, like, really supporting heteronormativity, because, Everybody's obsessed with saying that everything's gay now when nothing is. 
And so then they go even further backwards by having the shocking things of, oh, this woman we thought was a lesbian is actually straight, breaking stereotypes. It's like, but there aren't any lesbians in the first place, so you're not actually doing anything. Mm-hmm. So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to list a couple places where I've seen LGBTQ characters that are actually, um, in my opinion, well represented. So um, there's, the ki- there's the kids movie Paranorman, where this hyper-masculine guy um, is presented as straight and he, everybody assumes he's going to end up with the cheerleader, but then at the last second, he's like, oh, my boyfriend would love this. Or uh, you'd love my boyfriend because he's into this. And that's, I love that because it's, the whole movie implies that he's straight. And then at the last moment, it shows that gay people look just like everyone else. And it's not a bad thing to be gay. And then um, in, I believe it's the second season of Broad Church, which is a British drama, there is uh, an elderly lesbian couple. Uh, one of them's a judge who's losing her eyesight, and um, it a lot of it, that one specifically really seems like it's trying to pander to the community, but um, okay. the way that it's done is okay. It's the best one I've seen for lesbians, at least. There's a lesbian documentary coming out on Netflix soon, and I'm so excited. It's about these old lesbians who hid their relationship for a really long time. There's this really good, it's like, I swear by it, it is my favorite. There's this episode of Black Mirror called San Junipero. And if you yes! know what Black Mirror is. Oh my god. Yeah. I love that episode. Every, it's iconic. It's biracial, kind of like ghost lesbians. I love it. One of them is and a lesbian. And there also is bi- bisexual representation, which is amazing. Yeah. There's bisexual representation in it, which is amazing. They get married. It's probably the one happy ending episode of Jen Juden Pero there is. So good. Or a Black Mirror that there is. Yeah, it's very good. I swear by that. I also swear by that I'm a cheerleader. It's a very. that movie. It is very. It's a little old fashioned because it was made in like the late nineties, early two thousands. Yeah, yeah. It is an old movie, so uh, some things are kind of outdated, mm-hmm. but it's still very good. Yeah. Oh, what is it? I'm thinking of one more thing, but I'm drawing a blank. While while you're thinking of that, um, I have a couple more. If you're oh, more Buffy. interested, what? Buffy. Mm. There's like a lesbian couple in that, which was the very early 2000s, and I kind of hate Josh Whedon, I really do, but it was still like very, it was very before its time. Mm. If you're not interested into like rom-coms or uh, like dramas, there's yeah. also other ones that have LGBTQ characters. Um, for example, Deadpool, but um, Negasonic Teenage Warhead is more of like a minor character, but still. Um, and then um, the kids' movie Robots has uh, that trans robot played mm-hmm. by Robin Williams. Oh, yeah. I have- yeah. And that's that- That was one of my favorite childhood movies. That's, that's pretty gay. It's, it's great, and I love it. And then there's the um, TV show Firefly that has a bisexual character. Mm-hmm. And um, everyone was saying that Firefly was ahead of its time, and it really was. It still is. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's yeah. also Josh Whedon. It. it is. Okay. Um, something like there's other shows that do a combination of handling things really well and also handling things not well. Like both of my two, two of my favorite shows, which I can have them be my favorites and also be critical of them, are Friends and How I Met Your Mother, you know, the traditional sitcoms. I love them. Friends was really ahead of its time with the lesbians, with Ross's lesbian ex wife. She gets married. Lesbian marriage, like, gay marriage wasn't even legal at that point, and the only reason Ross was upset was because it was his ex-wife. Then there's, of course, a lot of other things that they don't handle very well, so it's kind of a weird mix of being really ahead of its time, but also 
still kind of making homophobic and transphobic jokes. Oh, still very complicated. Yeah, um, and yeah, that's the same with How I Met Your Mother, is that like there is a lesbian couple in it towards the end of the things, and there are other things that they're really awesome with, but then they still do make gay jokes and stuff. It's it's very interesting, so yeah, those are weird. And something else that I also don't see where everybody says that it's all the time, like everybody's like, oh, we never see feminine lesbians, it's oh, always those ugly butches. It's like, Show me where the butchers are on TV. There's none. There's there's not any. I think the closest is in But I'm a Cheerleader. And so, like... Oh, clearly at all. But, like, I think it's really interesting that, like, people are like, oh, there's all these lesbian stereotypes. Let's break them. All the lesbians are masculine, and all we see is masculine lesbians. Like, all I see on TV are straight girls kissing other straight girls. What do you want? So... That's just something interesting that there's still heteronormativity in our rep- representation. There's not. Mm-hmm. There are yeah. a couple movies that cast lesbians in a very bad light. Like A Girl King, which is about a very specific uh, LGBTQ historical figure who mm-hmm. actually existed. I forget her name at the time, but I will Google it later and get back to you. Um, they have her like hitting on this female, like, uh, staff member of her. And it's very, like, it's very creepy and it's almost predatory how she does it. I would like some lesbian movies where they're not cheating on their husbands. Can we? Yes, please. No, we can't, apparently. Anyways, but yeah, that's just some more heavy Also, yes, I grew up with this TV show. I loved it at the time. Pretty Little Liars. I I loved it. I I didn't watch it either. I loved it when I was growing up, but I rewatched it when I was, like, 21. Really quick, and before we move on, I, I want to cover two more TV have... shows. Two, so there's two more TV shows I want to go over okay. really, really quick before we move on. Oh, um, okay. They're both sitcoms. There's The Good Place. Uh, the main character is a raging bisexual, which is amazing. Mm-hmm. And then um, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Uh, has uh, Captain Holt, who is a gay man, married to his husband, and it's a very healthy relationship, and it's portrayed very well. And then there's Rosa Diaz, who is a bisexual woman, and it the show deals with her coming out to her family, and it, it portrays it very well. Superstore also has really good representation. It has a Latina, uh, uh, and an illegal immigrant Latina, um, or wait, no, not Latina. He's Filipino. Sorry. The other character is Latina. Um, gay man. And he is kind of like dramatic and stuff, but also there's, he's handled really well. So there are some more modern TV shows coming out with good representation. All right. So our next term is heterosexism. Uh, it's very similar to cis sexism. It's behavior that grants preferential right or preferential treatment to heterosexual people and re- reinforces the idea that heterosexuality is somehow better or more right than queerness or being LGBTQ and makes other sexualities invisible. And that's pretty accurate. Um, while we're on the topic of heterosexual, uh, that's our next term. Um, Heterosexual, or also referred to as straight, is experience attraction solely or primarily to some members of a different gender. And then um, our next two terms are homosexual and homophobia. So homosexual is a person primarily or emotional, uh, primarily emotionally, physically, and or sexually attracted to members of the same sex or gender. And then homophobia is the umbrella term for uh, a range of negative attitudes, such as fear, anger, intolerance, resentment, or erasure uh, towards homosexual people. It's not fear. It's not. (laughs) It's not fear. It's not. It's hatred. And, yeah. And And that, I love that people actually think that they're afraid of gay people. I know. I love that people are so dumb. That they put that in the description. Yeah, um, in a way that like heterosexism with homophobia, I feel like is very common in, in its way that it shows um, is 
assuming that heterosexual people have like sex the appropriate way and gay people only attend like rampant orgies and stuff i had to explain to both of my grandparents that me being gay was not like it, it wasn't unhealthy for me and that's a way that i see a lot of heterosexism come through is thinking that gay people inherently do all of these unhealthy or they they're not always unhealthy but all of these crazy sex things assuming that hetero people are the only ones that can appropriately do things so that's a it's a really common way that it shows itself what i've even seen is it's kind of the opposite where um gay people typically have healthier relationships than um straight people or at least are portrayed with healthier relationships because we have to be we have to be more careful yeah yeah all right our next term is intersex um which sa this says it's a term for a combination of chromosomes gonads hormones internal sex organs and genitals that differ from the two expected patterns of male or female formerly known as hermaphrodite like we said before that is an outdated term um but these term yeah but these terms are now outdated and derogatory so That's a pretty um, good description of it yeah um intersex is it, it's a wide wide range of combinations too so you can be somewhere in the middle um which we hannah and i went to a workshop and um, one of the presenters um, described themselves as being more in the middle of this um and being more in the middle basically means that um you kind of have both sets of genitalia or you have um both sex or both both sets of sex organs mm -hmm. but you can be um you can be on one end where for example um you can be born female but have ma extra male hormones or you can be born male and have extra female hormones that sort of thing and um it's it's a wide range and we talked about it a little bit in our last video if you want a, a little bit deeper um, knowledge of intersex and what intersex people have to face but one of the biggest takeaways from that workshop that we went to about intersex people is that they're not it's not a wrong way of development it's not wrong it's literally just different mm -hmm. just a different way that they formed there's usually not any complications the complications from being intersex usually come when the doctors mess with it so being intersex is nothing bad it doesn't have anything like it's not unhealthy it's a wide range and it's just different mm -hmm. and um where was i going with this i don't remember it, it doesn't matter our next term is lesbian which we've already covered quite a lot yeah, um, yeah. yeah. and the um definition here is women who are exclusively attracted romantically erotically and or emotionally to other women yeah and and it is the exclusive yes action. and you can also be asexual or romantic and be a lesbian that's okay you don't have to have both as long as you're exclusively attracted to women and you are woman or woman aligned or at the very least completely not male aligned you're good. Yeah, is the next one lipstick lesbian, Matt? No, that's after, but you can cover a lipstick lesbian next. Okay. We should also cover so, gold star lesbian because yeah. I mm -hmm. hate that term. Yeah. So, so what much. they have what they have for lip lipstick lesbian is usually refers to a lesbian with feminine gender expression can be used in a positive or derogatory way is sometimes also used to refer to a lesbian who is assumed to be or passes for straight yeah that's that's kind of true so it's not just feminine um lipstick lesbian normally refers to lesbians who 
um, are more traditionally feminine, like wear like traditionally like makeup and dresses and stuff. And normally lipstick lesbian refers to lesbians who are also attracted to other feminine lesbians. Femme normally means you're attracted to Bush and Bush normally means you're attracted to Femme, but lipstick lesbians, it, once again, it's not always lipstick lesbians can be attracted to whatever woman they want, but normally lipstick lesbians tend to be attracted to other feminine lesbians. Um, lipstick lesbian in itself isn't a bad term. Don't confuse it with femme. Do not call a femme lesbian a lipstick lesbian. They will not like it because they're very different, even if they don't seem to be. Um, something else to be careful with, a, with people who identify as lipstick lesbians is that unfortunately, a lot of um, trans exclusive lesbians will refer to themselves as lipstick lesbians. That just ended up being a correlation. They don't mean anything. It's not if you're a lesbian. It's correlation, not causation. Yeah, exactly. And so just be careful sometimes with people that you encounter that identify as lipstick lesbians because, yeah, unfortunately, a lot of them, um, on, especially online, are the kind of lesbians who are TERFs and shouldn't even be allowed to call themselves lesbians because if you're not attracted to trans women, um, you're not attracted to women. So it's not okay. Um, there also something else I meant to mention earlier is that high femme is also like that's also another thing that's normally tossed in with like lipstick lesbian and femme lesbian high femme does not mean ultra feminine it so high femme corresponds with stone butch stone butch also does not mean hyper masculine um high femme refers to a femme lesbian who um it, though they're sexual terms so um high femme refers to a lesbian who does not want to give sexually, only wants to receive, and Stone Butch is the opposite. Stone Butch is somebody who only wants to give and not receive. It doesn't mean hyper-feminine. It doesn't mean anything like that. Other, like once again, non-lesbians using high femme is really weird, because that's even like, the yeah, they're, they're not aesthetics at all. They're, they're strictly sexual. Um, things because a lot of lesbians do have um, oh yeah and yeah it's for and it is for like relationship wise to like Joy was saying so that's that's another thing that is thrown around a lot where people don't actually know what they mean so mm -hmm. yeah so our next one is the acro it's an acronym it's LGBTQ or GSM or DSG or TGNC and I've only ever heard of LGBTQ. That's a lot of acronyms um, right there. Yeah. Um, also, the A, if you ever see the A included Many in LGBTQ. A stands for asexual or aromantic, not ally. But if it, if you. You're not part of the community. If you, if, if you use it for ally, you are indicating that you are identifying as an ally as a way of remaining closeted, but still being part of the community. Yeah. And that is a thing that happens. You can be, you can d disguise yourself as an ally to remain closeted and safe. Yeah. Um, something else there are, the, the only other variations on that kind of thing that I've seen are sometimes good variations, sometimes bad. So sometimes when people are talking strictly about sexuality and not gender identity, they'll say LGB um, because that they're not talking about gender identity right there, they're talking about sexuality. But sometimes you'll see some really terrible things that talk about the LGB community, meaning they don't consider trans people part of the community. And that's okay. So be careful when you see abbreviations, because sometimes it can just be referring to one thing or the other. Sometimes it's people being transphobic or homophobic, because I've, I've also seen the B erased, I've seen the L erased. Um, there's, there's, some crappy people out there. So shortened abbreviations of the acronym aren't always bad, but be careful when you see a shortened part of the acronym. Mm -hmm. And there is a foundation out there right now that is the LGB. Um, it, it's it, it's the like the LGB foundation or something, and it's because they think that trans people are receiving all the rights now, and that's not the case. We're just receiving more rights because it's because we're catching up 
yeah, you didn't have the rights. You gave yeah. it. You can take rights away from me. Say right. it's 2020 and they're actually starting to be treated like human beings. Like, yeah. And even then, literally, right now during this pandemic, a lot of trans health care is being taken away. Yeah, because of who we've got in power. Yeah. We're, we're going to go, go into that another time. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. All right. Okay. Anyway, so LGBT, so these acronyms. Uh, shorthand or umbrella terms for all folks who have non-normative or queer gender or sexuality. There are many different initial initialisms that people prefer. LGBTQ is lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer or questioning. Sometimes people add a plus at the end. I usually do because I want it to be more inclusive. And um, GSM is gender and sexual minorities. Okay. DSG is diverse sexu sexual diverse sexualities and genders. TGNC is transgender and gender nonconforming. So that one would be um, yeah yeah trans exclusive. Um, sometimes you'll see NB added for non-binary. Um, also, so I know that so like you Matt like to add the Q plus to the end of it, but somebody who doesn't doesn't mean they're exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I normally just say LGBT because personally I feel like that is inclusive of everybody because those are those are all the all the things, but it doesn't mean that I'm exclusive. Just like yeah, so it doesn't it, it's not inherently bad. Um can we talk about an acronym that is frequently seen online that can be really harmful to the community that's MOGAI? Yes, but let, let's finish this yeah. one real quick. So other options include the initialism GLBT or LGBT and the acronym quilt bag. Quilt bag? Queer or questioning, undecided, intersex, lesbian, trans, bisexual, asexual, or allied, and gay or genderqueer. Interesting. Yeah. Bad. So let's, t so now you can talk about MOGAI. Okay, so MOGAI stands for marginalized orientations genders ooh and ooh what's the i i i forget the whole thing ooh dang uh, oh and identity so marginalized orientations genders and identities it's normally just a term seen online um moga identities tend to be really harmful and they're normally found by people just figuring out whether or not they're lgbt and um, basically, what Mogai does is gives everybody their own personal label, and it alienates a lot of people. It makes people feel like it, it really takes away from a lot of people's figuring out their actual identities, because that Mogai is the thing that kind of has all of the, like, star gender, or I, oh, I've seen some really, like, an, I've seen anime gender. I've, Autism gender. Oh, oh, yeah. So that's where those come from. That's not what our community is about. It's not, no, it is not. everybody, their own personal little identifiers. It's about being a solid group who is against homophobia and transphobia. So if you see people like, I, I can't think of some of the other things, like I've seen some really weird sexualities as well. You don't have to compartmentalize yourself. You don't have to define every aspect of your being. And that's what Mogai does. It defines all of your attraction. So like I've seen things, it's like some days you're attracted to this and some days you're attracted to that and some days you're not. That means you have this name. It's like, or you can just kind of combine yourself like and call yourself a term that envelops all of that and puts you into a community rather taking like picking apart your identity and giving each part of your identity its own word because that can be really damaging and really alienating to a lot of people so watch out for that i'm gonna try to speed this up a little bit because we're almost at um an hour and a half okay hello um i also before we move on, though, I want to cover MAPS. Um, oh. That stands for Minor Attracted Person. They are not LGBT. They are pedophiles. Yes, They're they are. It is, that is a, men, that is 
it, it's it's dangerous and it's not LGBTQ even if they tell you they are they're not and a lot of times they'll take um they'll take our flags and modify them yep. so that they look similar but they're actually for their communities and yeah. it's, it's not they're, a, I know they also have a new acronym but I don't remember what it is it's like no, pair or something oh yeah pair um another one that they use is no maps which means non-offending maps. So basically, they're like, I'm a pedophile, but I don't actually touch children. I just watch them. That's still disgusting. You still need therapy or jail. That's it. Like, those are your options. Don't be a pedophile. They're not LGBT. They're disgusting. All right. Our next term is metrosexual, which is one that I'm not familiar with. I've heard of it, and I don't like it. This says, a man with a strong aesthetic sense who spends more time, energy, or money on his appearance and grooming than is considered gender normative. Yeah, it's it's not a... I remember reading a little bit about that word. It's not really an LGBT word. It was a word that was partially made to make fun of straight men who want to take care of their appearance. Like, that's, that's what it's been, that's what it was made for. It was just like, oh, you're a metrosexual because you actually take showers and groom your beard. That, it's not, it's not a sexuality, it's not an identity. It's, it's just called clean. Yeah, it's just saying a guy who takes care of himself. So don't use that. It's just, take care of yourself. That's cool. You don't need a label for taking care of yourself. All right, uh, the next ones are MSM, MLM, uh, WSW, or WLW. And that's basically uh, men who have sex with men or men who love men, and then women who have sex with women or m women who love women. Mm -hmm. And that covers lesbians and bi women and gay men and bi men. And mm -hmm. it, it's, it's pretty inclusive. Yep. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, the pronoun mix, which is MX. Um, it's, uh, it's pronounced mix. This site says it may be pronounced schwa, which I have never heard ever. Never heard so just that. pronounce it mix. Uh, it's an honorific, much like Mr., Miss, or Mrs., that is gender neutral. And it is the option of choice for folks who do not identify within the gender binary. And, um, we have a fellow, uh, club member who uses mix. And we've also met uh, teachers that use mix. God, I wish I had a teacher like that. I've never had any LGBT teachers, to my knowledge. I've had one, and it was for s public speaking. I think she's, my third grade teacher was wonderful. Working. All right, our, our next one is passing. So this one is for trans people. And it is uh, for trans people being accepted as or able to pass for a member of, so basically they're able to um, be seen as cisgender. And um, it's, they, they it, it's basically they pass as the gender that they are transitioning towards. Mm -hmm. And for non-binary people, uh, passing is typically just confusion because because <laughs> yeah. it they're not aiming to be to look like one gender um and that's if they're passing because they don't they don't have to uh look androgynous if they don't want to it's 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 different for non-binary people so our next one is another one i wish we had ren for because they could explain it better it's polyamory or polyamorous and it refers to the practice of desire for or orientation towards having ethical, honest, and consensual non-monogamous relationships, often shortened to poly. And it's basically you have relationships with more than one person at a time, and it's got open communication so everybody is on the same page. If, mm -hmm. if people don't know about the other people, that's called cheating. That's not a polyamorous relationship. That's just cheating. And there is a difference between open relationships. Yes, but polyamory, it, um, it, it can be um, one person in the middle having these two partners and the two partners are not, um, are not in a relationship with each other, or it can be that all of them are in relationships with each other. I've even seen one um, 
because I, I had a friend who was in a five person poly relationship and it was just this group of people who were all in this one big relationship and it was really cool. Yeah, um, and I know in the last video too, we talked a little bit about what polyamory isn't in regards to the latest phenomenon of Tiger King. So go watch, once again, go watch that one. There's a lot of good information in our last video talk and we talked a lot about what polyamory isn't and when you need to stop being polyamorous when it gets unhealthy. So give that a, give that a watch. All right, our next term is queer. Um, this is referred, it, it's an umbrella term to describe individuals who don't identify as straight or cisgender. And um, it's, it used to, it used to be more often used as a slur to refer to someone who isn't straight or cisgender, but it's less used now as a slur, but I've still heard it um, due to its historical use as a derogatory term and how it's still used as a slur. Many communic many communic Many communities don't use it. Um, however, some people use it as an identity. Mm -hmm. um, don't use this for someone unless you get their permission. Yeah, and I've seen recently a huge, huge explosion of calling everything queer. I've seen so many times where a celebrity will come out as gay or come out as bisexual or come out as trans or come out as a lesbian and all of the news things are like, look at this queer celebrity. It's like, they came out as something specific. Do not call them queer. And don't always say it. Don't just assume someone wants to be called queer. Yeah. And like, it's not always the best to say the queer community because a lot of people in the LGBT community don't identify as queer. I'm not queer. I don't want to be called queer. I don't want to be part of that. I love it when people identify it for themselves. But it's just not for me. So when people say the queer community, I feel really alienated because I don't want to be called queer. And I feel like recently with, I've just been seeing the term LGBT used less, 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 and less. And it's alienating me from my own community because I don't want to be called that. So be careful with your usage with it. Get people's permission and don't say queer all the time. Not everybody wants to be called queer or have their queerness discussed. You can discuss my lesbianness, but you cannot discuss my queerness because I'm not queer. Mm -hmm. So our next one is LGBTQ POC, and that's, that just stands for um, LGBTQ people of color. Yep. yep. Um, next one is, so there's sex assigned at birth. Um, that it's sometimes called designated sex at birth, uh, sex coercively assigned at birth, or specifically used as, or it could be more specific, such as assigned male at birth or assigned female at birth, which is also often referred to as AMAB or AFAB. Um, and it's a phrase used to intentionally recognize a person's assigned sex, not gender identity. So for example, a trans masculine person could be a fab or assigned female at birth. Um, sex reassignment surgery. Um, it's, it's, it's not the best term for it. Typically the better term is gender confirmation surgery, but um, it's used by some medical professionals to, to refer to a group of surgical options that alter a person's biological sex. Um, so it's, in most cases, one or more multiple surgeries, one or multiple surgeries are required to achieve legal recognition of gender variance. That's a little bit outdated. It's not, in, not, in some places, it still is the case where you have to have multiple surgeries to gain legal recognition. But in Washington, you don't need it. You can just change your gender marker, which is really nice. Um, so some of the surgical procedures are things like top surgery or bottom surgery. Um, and uh, there's, there's also other ones such as like tracheal shave. Um, and that's, that it's just, it's gender affirming surgeries. Yeah. And also don't ask somebody if they've had surgeries or if they want surgeries or if they're going to have surgeries. That's not your business. It's their business. Yeah. So yeah. if they offer the information and they want to talk about it, awesome. 
it's not your job to wonder what parts they have because that's mm -hmm. not business. All right, our next term is one that I'm not familiar with. Um, it's scoliosexual. Yeah. And this website d uh, describes it as being primarily sexually, romantically, and or emotionally attracted to some genderqueer, transgender, transsexual, and or non-binary people. That sounds to me like one you should be careful with because it can be seen as transphobic or fetishization of non-cis yeah. people. And I've seen other words that better do, I, because I've seen that one thrown around, but I've also seen other words that kind of talk about the same thing without being, like, better she. I don't mm -hmm. know, but <laughs> yeah, be careful. Mm -hmm. The one I've most commonly seen is uh, referring to trans people who only want to date other people who are non-cis, and that's called T for T, and that's more of like a safety and comfort thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I would definitely say if you're cis, be really careful talking about if mm -hmm. you be with non-binary. It makes sense for non-binary or trans people to want to be with other non-binary or trans people because they know those people automatically understand them. But if you're cis, be careful or don't. Mm -hmm. identify that way because it can really put a lot of people off. All right, so next term is another trans term, it's stealth. So this is one where a trans person has transitioned and they are not out as trans, but they are perceived as the gender that they, transi they transitioned to. And it's basically nobody knows, they're they're living as the gender that they want to be seen as because that's what their brain told them and nobody knows that they're trans and that is honestly my goal um yeah uh, next one is straight it's just a person who's heterosexual you're attracted to the opposite gender yeah oh and i it wasn't on here but um you'll hear people say cishet which just means both cis and heterosexual, so cisgender and het heterosexual. Once again, not a derogatory term. Not, not a slur. Just identifying somebody who is in no way part of the community. If you're cishet, you're not LGBT. So that's that goes with that. Mm -hmm. um, all right, the next one is stud. So this one is most commonly used to indicate a black, African-American, and or Latina, masculine, lesbian, or queer woman, also known as butch or aggressive. I don't like that they used aggressive. Nope. So stud is a black lesbian term. If you are not a black lesbian, you don't get to use that word. It is pretty much equal to butch, but it's the black version. If you are not black, if you are not a lesbian, like all of the TikTok lesbians right now calling themselves studs, not okay. That is both lesbian, like, cultural appropriation, if you're not a lesbian, and very much black cultural appropriation. It's not even a minority thing. It is black culture. They made that word for themselves. It is their descriptor. No ifs, ands, or buts. Like, that's it. Mm -hmm. Do it, some research. Yeah, it's, Yeah. That's it. All right, our next one is third gender. Uh, this is for a person who does not identify with either man or woman, but identifies with another gender. This gender category is used by societies that recognize three or more genders, both contemporary and historic, and is a conceptual term meaning different things for di to different people who use it as a way to move beyond the gender binary. Yeah. So. I'm not super familiar with this one, but um, most people who don't identify with male or female typically use non-binary mm -hmm. or agender, which are two different things. Non-binary is not identifying with either gender, but being a third gender, basically, and then agender is having no gender. Yeah, and also with non-binary, non-binary is a third gender, but it's not once again, it's outside of the binary. So I've been seeing a lot of people online recently being like, if you're non-binary, you have to be androgynous and you have to use they, them pronouns. And that's not the case. That's forcing people into another box. Non-binary is not, like, it is a third gender, but it's not a third box. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that's something I've seen recently that a lot of people are trying to dictate how non-binary people live their lives. And, and also, many non-European cultures recognize a, six or more genders. Yeah. It's a very Christian, Catholic, European, Eurocentric idea that there's only two genders. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, our next, so we're in the T section now, so it's going to be a lot of trans stuff. So the next one is top surgery. This one refers to uh, surgery for the, re so it's also called um, chest reconstruction surgery, and it's basically creating a male type or masculine chest uh, for a, uh, so for a female, so for a person who is identified female at birth who wants who wants top surgery is getting a masculine chest or for a person who is male at birth um who wants breasts can get breast augmentation yeah so our next one is trans asterisk that's an umbrella term and i'm going to share this real quick. So transgender is a, it's an umbrella term and it includes both binary and non-binary and it's, so it's for everybody who isn't cisgender and if you're on the, bi if you're somewhere in the binary area that is trans man or trans woman. And then if you're non-binary, it's genderqueer, gender fluid, bigender, agender. Uh, and then there's also demigender, which I'll cover. Um, basically, demigender is when you are, it, it's a lot like bigender, except instead of being more than one gender, you are, it is like a combination of those, but it is one gender. So it's, so for example, for demiboy, it is somewhere between male and non-binary, but it's not either of those. It's somewhere in between. And then for demigirl, it's the same thing, but with female instead of male. Cool. Um, something that I want to say with, with the umbrellas as well as something that I've seen a lot, both recently and in like historical and context, and I'm once again going to talk about more how it relates to butch lesbians, because that's what I know more about, is that it's just as much as it's okay to be non-binary and trans, and that's wonderful, it's just as okay to just be gender non-conforming and not identify as another gender, because butches get that all the time. A butch, like a butch lesbian, will be, you know, a very masculine presenting woman, and will have people ask her all the time, so when are you going to transition to a guy? Why aren't you just trans? Why aren't you just a guy? Why don't you identify with this? It's like, because being gender non-conforming is okay. And I've seen a big pushback on that recently within the community of trying to put people in boxes again. Uh, like, I feel like obviously not everybody and obviously not within a bigger community. It tends to be within the LGBT community. There's been a pushback on people who don't necessarily identify as another gender and like I've seen a lot of people being like if you're feminine you need to identify as a girl and if you're masculine you need to identify as a boy it's like that's not it you don't have to do that you can be non-conforming that's okay you don't need to be shoving people into trans boxes like I've, I've seen that a lot recently especially with some of the younger lesbian community attacking lesbians who maybe use different pronouns or present differently, saying that you can't be a lesbian unless you're feminine, and that's literally just accept people. Yeah, like Joy just says, she's had multiple people tell her that she's just a trans guy, and that's just not true. So yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna m move on. Uh, so the next one is trans. Uh, transgender. I'm also going to cover transsexual. Um, basically, the difference is that transgender is identifying as a gender other than the gender you were assigned at birth, and then transsexual is um, actually making the transition to the, to the gender um, that you identify as, and transsexual is an outdated term. People really don't use it anymore. Um, 
if it works for you, it works for you, and that's fine. But um, don't don't call people that unless they wish to be called transsexual. Hmm. Um, transition and transitioning is the process of um, changing aspects of of a trans person, changing aspects of themselves to be more congruent with the gender that they know themselves to be. Mm -hmm. um, and something to go along with that is that people don't have to transition. Like, right. they don't want to. If you identify as a man and you are AFAB, um, but you don't want to get top or bottom surgery, that doesn't negate your transness. And same with, like, non-binary people who don't want to get surgery or transition to look more androgynous, which normally means vaguely male-presenting. Androgynous doesn't have to be that. You don't have to transition, and that's up to you. That's a personal choice, and if people try to tell you that you're not trans because you don't want to transition, they're wrong. A lot of what I've seen is um, non-binary people will opt for, so AFAB non-binary people will opt for top surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, AMAB non-binary people might take estrogen, and then um, tra trans masculine people, so trans men, um, might take so we'll take testosterone and get top surgery, but often won't go for bottom surgery, but some of them still do. And then um, I don't know a lot about trans women, but I know that a lot of them will go on estrogen and um, get uh, bre breast augmentation. Or facial feminization surgery. Yes. That's another and, and laser hair removal on their face. Mm -hmm. Trans women have to go through so much more. No, I love they, have to, they have to take like a whole concoction of uh, pills and hormones just to just to look vaguely feminine, and a lot of times they still don't, and it's really sad. And then people are like, "Oh, you're just a guy with long hair." It's so hurtful to mm -hmm. ugh, I hate it, but um, also and they also have to do voice training, whereas trans men can mm -hmm. just take testosterone and be good. Yeah, and something that I feel like a lot of people, like like I said, that androgynous tends to mean vaguely masculine. Breasts aren't inherently feminine. If you don't want them, that's awesome. If you do want them, that's awesome. But breasts don't equal girl. So if you're if you're a non-binary person and feel like you have to get top surgery, if you're an AFAB non-binary person, and you feel like you have to get top surgery to be non-binary. That's not true because. You don't need it, but you can have it. Oh, yeah, you can have it, 100%. If you want it, go for it. But I know that there are a lot of non-binary people who feel like they can't be non-binary unless they get top surgery to have a flat chest. It's like, it's not inherently feminine. It's okay. So, yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, transphobia is the discrimination against or hatred of trans people or the trans community. It's pretty, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, here's another outdated term, it's transvestite, it's one yeah. that you should never use, um, it's very similar to cross-dressing, which is also another outdated term that should not be used, but this one is, like, extra, do not use it, um, and it, like I said, it's very similar to cross-dressing. It, it's, it's a derogatory term for yeah. people who are cross-dressing. And it's typically referred to trans women. Yeah. All right, we have two more terms. So the next one is two-spirit. It is an umbrella term traditionally within Native American communities to recognize individuals who possess qualities or fulfill roles of both feminine and masculine genders. So I don't know a lot about this because it is a Native American uh, cultural gender and it's... Don't, it, don't use it unless you're Native American because yeah. that's cultural appropriation. But um, I think it's a lot like non-binary. I'm a little Native American, but I haven't heard that. I'm not enough involved in the community to know. Who is she had a friend who at her at Central that was. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So someone that I went to college with for a while, who was in my art classes, uh, they use they them pronouns, but they are about 33 years old, I believe, and uh, as for about, I think it was about five years ago is when they finally came, or like came out as Two-Spirit, but they are Native American, and the Two-Spirit is a very 
it is a overall term, but it means something different to every single individual is what it means. And it's also something that means different things based on what, uh, or like where you are from. So like or, what tribe? Yeah, what tribe you're from. It also, it means different things based on what tribe you're from and what the culture is around there. But for them, uh, it basically meant that they have a male and female, uh, like kind of spirit in them. And that can fluctuate and express itself differently in different ways. But their masculine side is much stronger than their feminine side. So they do testosterone and uh, they dress masculinely, but they use, um, like, but they still talk about for, like femininity in uh, like a different way. Basically, the whole experience of gender is different to them and can fluctuate and change um, anytime. But yeah. Yeah, cool. Yes. All right. Thank you. They're a very cool individual. Their name is Zenith. That's a cool name. God, I wish my yeah. name was cool. Yeah. All right, and our last one is uh, Z slash Zir. And these are alternate pronouns, also known as neo-pronouns, that are gender neutral and referred to by some trans. So that a lot of non-binary non people you will might use Z, Zir instead of they, them. They replace he or she and his and hers, respectively. Uh, alternately, some people who are not comfortable with or do not embrace he or she pronouns use the plural they, there. So, like I said. Another um, one that goes with Z is sometimes it's not Z and Zer. Sometimes it's Z and here, like H-I. Mm -hmm. That's another really common one. Yep. So, like I said, we got these from the website. It's pronounced metrosexual.com. Um, honey wanted to mention earlier that I just, I didn't mention gold star lesbian really quick. Can oh, I yeah. Okay. So yeah. I hate the term because it is very, I think it's, has a very bad shadow over it and it's very discriminatory over lesbians who did not originally know that they were lesbians. Just because you once dated a guy at that time does not automatically make you bisexual yep. because i've been in very many relationships where i've been dying inside but just stayed with the person because i'm too nice like yeah. and it's you and gold star lesbian represents the women who've only been with women yeah and it's i hate it derogatory and it basically says that if you've been with a man, you're not a real lesbian. And that's not true, because all lesbians are gold star lesbians, because we're all cool, unless you're a turf. But that's a different issue. I've also heard the term gold star gay, but it's been a long time since I've seen that. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Don't use gold star lesbian. If anybody self-identifies as a gold star lesbian, they're probably not a very good person. All right. Um, before we close out, let's pick our next topic for next week. Um, I'm going to share the screen real quick. History of gays. <laughs> We've Did what? I miss that? I'm going to be so mad. Yeah, you missed the history one. We can oh, always do damn. another one later because there's all yeah. people to cover. Oh, that one can be a recurring one, honey. Mm -hmm. Yay. Because I need to talk about Sappho and how much I love her. Oh, big mood. I love her. Um, I think so much. gender stereotypes and how they affect people could be a good one to do next week because I feel like that goes along with a lot of the things we talked about today because it goes along with a lot of what I talked about. Mm -hmm. um, it goes along with a lot of um, the trans identities and non-binary identities, which are trans identities, but still. I think that'd be a good one um, to do next week. All right, so next week we'll be covering negative gender stereotypes and how they affect people. Um, and in the YouTube description, Matt, can we put the article that I mentioned in the description just so people can access it? Yeah, just send me the link. Cool. All right. So this has been Queer Conversations Week 2. I'm Matt, the club president of uh, Pride at SCC. I'm Hannah. I'm the PR manager of our club. I'm Honey. I'm just a Pride member, but I'm valid. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So that is this week's video, and we'll see you next week. Awesome. So.